Okay, so this is a uh, 206 pre-flight class, and we're not going to do a full whole pre-flight. We're just going to kind of show you some of the highlights of the 206, okay? So um, one thing I like to, to do with the propeller is oh, we always turn it backwards, right? Never forward because you might, you know, activate mm -hmm. the impulse coupling and if there's a charge in there. But I like to keep the prop down in this position because if it's up high like this, people put their heads into it. Down here, you know, they kind of see it, it hits the belly or whatever if, they, uh, if they're going to bump into it. But the 185, it's different. You know, I, I keep the props up here because it's so far up that uh, you're not going to hit your head on it. Okay? Um, some unique things about the 206, I mean, it's a heavier airplane, right? Uh, 3,600 pounds uh, for gross weight. And it's got a cargo pod. And the cargo pod is limited to 300 pounds, okay? Some other unique things about the pod, right, is if you're 3,450 pounds or greater, then you can only use 10 degrees of flaps for takeoff, right? But that's, that's actually more flight operations um, than in pre-flight necessarily. But uh, this airplane does have the, uh, the float kit conversion, right? So the V-brace is used for the float kit. And uh, these steps here, uh, the same thing. Um, it's nice to have the V-brace. Every bush plane that I've ever flown has always had a V-brace. Uh, it just reinforces the frame and gives it more structure, okay? Um, it's a good, durable airplane. I mean, this is the... Did you need this airplane? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's just rear time, you're dispatching at 11? I am. I will be there at 11. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, uh, this, this airplane, I mean, this is like the bush plane for many, many years. And there's, they're still using it quite extensively. The Kodiak, in a sense, is kind of replacing this airplane, but... Um, did you have something, James? Yeah, so do you still have the skins for H1CR? Yeah. Uh, I'm right back. Okay. I'll continue. Uh, so, okay, inside, when we do a pre-flight, I see it as three stages, right? There's in the cockpit, then there's fluids, and then there's the outside, okay? Mm -hmm. The fluids would include the drain points, checking the fuel, and checking the oil. The inside the cabin, I mean, we've got a checklist that we can use to, to go through that, but uh, it includes the documentation. And um, let me just kind of show you what I do for the inside of the uh, of this. Uh, I'm gonna get inside here and then you can come around. All right, so this uh, these checklists we've got in these pockets on the side. And um, on the back here, you've got uh, pre-flight inspection. So there's overview, there's cabin, fluids and then there's an exterior okay so for the cabin it's the same as when you get into an airplane and you do a flow except you start the flow at the very back underneath the seat you want to confirm that there is uh, you know a life um, a survival kit and a uh, medical kit right underneath the seat and then as you come up through the center you've got a, a fire extinguisher underneath the pilot's seat you want to make sure that it's full and that it is intact and you know the latches are good. Landing light, uh, landing light, landing light, a flashlight <laughs> is here. Okay, now the fuel selector is very different, right? Because uh, here you don't have both. You only have left, right, or off. Okay, and uh, they say to take off with the fullest tank in the POH as a limitation, right? Um, or we say in our operations the appropriate tank. But um, you just want to confirm that it is in left or right and that it's in a detent. Cow flaps, you can run them through to see that they're working. And then, um, you know, over here we've got the flaps, which we're going to put down in a moment. Uh, mixture, we want to make sure that it's at cutoff. And, I, you know, I would actually push the vernier button and pull it physically out to make sure it is, in fact, cut off. Because in a moment we're going to check the fuel pump, okay? And there's three stages of the fuel pump. There's low, medium, and high. And uh, we don't want to be pumping fuel through the, divide, the flow divider into the induction or the intake uh, when we test it on the ground. So we want to make sure that the mixture is in fact at idle cutoff. The same is true of the 185. Okay, um, mixture, prop, throttle, and then come across the switches are all off except for the beacon and we can take off this uh, control lock and then I'm going to turn the master on. These, this master switch is massive compared to the ones you've probably seen before. But uh, there's, there's, it's a split switch, you know, battery on the right, alternator on the left. And we call out, Masher coming on, 6-1 Zulu. Okay, 
no gear to be worried about as to whether it's down or not. But uh, all right, so up here on the left, we've got a uh, volt gauge. You've seen it in the 185 as well. And uh, you can select, you know, temperature, density, altitude, etc. But this is useful to us when we initially start up to confirm that it has 24 volts. If you see 22 volts, you know, your battery is virtually dead. Okay. Now, the unique thing about this airplane here is the uh, MVP on the far right. Okay. MVP does not stand for most valuable player. Do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, are you recording this for yeah. like Panopto? Is it okay if I just watch it? It won't be on. I, don't, I doubt it'll be Panopto, but you can watch it later if you can't watch okay, it. Okay, because, yeah, I think I, I need to clean sure. a couple of airplanes that need to head out. Okay, yeah. sounds good. You can catch the video later. Uh, hey, right. could you clean uh, the, the Skyhawk that's on this side of the production maintenance hangar? Just while you're at it, just kind of sanitize. It's in, the, it's in the hangar? It's in the production maintenance hangar on this side. It's the one with all the like guts taken out of it. So they, they just want you to sanitize just kind of like basic touch surfaces in there. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so the MVP-50 gives us some, uh, some information, okay? Um, this is the only place that you're going to see manifold pressure, hmm. all right? It's not like the steam gauge in the 185 or in the 182 where you can look at it without having the master on. In this case, you're only going to find it here. So it's good to take note of it because when we do our... Uh, a bore point and numbers. We want to know, you know, what the manifold pressure is at static minus two, and we should at least be producing that on takeoff. So in this case, it says 28.1. Then we make a mental note in our performance numbers that we want at least over 26 inches of manifold for our uh, performance. Um, okay, now this uh, it has several buttons here, and I'll kind of zoom in here as best I can. Let's see. So. Then, while you have the master on, you know, we're going to, to check the boost pump, okay, we have a yellow and a red. The yellow is low and medium. The low happens when the throttle is all the way to idle, and the medium happens as you advance the throttle. And then the high is a, a spring-loaded switch that defaults to the off position. Okay, so I'm going to turn the low on, then advance the throttle, and you can hear all three stages, okay? And um, we typically do that on the pre-flight to check that the, those stages of the, of the motor are running. But again, we want to make sure that the mixture is, in fact, at idle cutoff. You can check the trims. You know, um, I'm not going to run you all through that right now. Check the controls. Uh, controls are free in all directions. And then all your circuit breakers, all of them, are on the left side of the panel here. I don't know if you can see that. And these two switches here are your um, avionics switches. We don't turn them both on at the same time. We turn one on at a time. So it's boom, boom, not both at the same, okay? And you can check, excuse me, check your circuit breakers are all in. And then this would be the time to put the flaps down, okay? Uh, so watch your head. Mm -hmm. And you can do it, you know, each at each stage. There's 10, 20, and full. There's no 30 degrees of flaps. It's 10, 20, and full. We just want to make sure that the micro switches are working so that it stops when they, when you have that set. Okay? Then I can turn the master off. By the way, for the MVP50 to work, you do not need the avionics switch on. It's independent of the avionics switch. All right. Then, uh, I'm just pointing out more of the basics in this. I'm not going to go into a full pre-flight. Obviously, you know, you want to go through the cabin and check each item. All the paperwork and documentation is in place. Um, and then the fluids. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fluids here. I'm going to hop out. There goes my head. <laughs> um, okay, the fluids are uh, interesting. You want to start at the top. There's one on each side of the tank, just one, right? It's not like multiple ones, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, one here and then one on the right. We start up high because if there's water, we want to capture that in the beginning rather than start at the bottom and let that water from above work its way down, right? So you got top right and top left for the, for the tanks, integral tanks, okay? And then down here, we have a, a tab that we pull and we capture that fuel, and I'll just kind of pull it. Do you see that briefly coming out right there, that nipple? 
it comes out of there, okay? So that's the second point. Now the, the third and fourth points are quite challenging. Awesome. Okay? And uh, that's where you don't want to have a nice white shirt. <laughs> Let's come on over here and I'm going to show it to you. Basically, in the pod, okay, it's draining two header tanks. This airplane has two header tanks, unlike the 185. Okay, and those header tanks, when the when you select left or right, it's drawing from left or right of that header tank. It's about a one and a half or one gallon tank, very small, but we have drains for that, and they're inside of here in the pod, way back in there. The furthest up right one is very hard to get to, and I'll let your instructors show you how that how how to do that. Okay. Um, so those are your drain points. The oil is from here. It's kind of interesting. We've got some oil there. You know, I would take note of that. And uh, get a flashlight. You want to look inside of here. This is your uh, oil dipstick. And uh, here again, it's got a tab. If you want to come in close, it's got a tab that runs on that groove. So when you put it in, you don't want it to sit it sideways because then the tab's on top and it's not, you know, it's not secure. locked in there secure. Minimum nine quarts, maximum 12, okay? We don't want to take off with less than nine quarts of oil. Also, you know, it's hard, but with a flashlight, you can kind of see the alternator belt. If you can't see it, reach in there and feel it with your, with your finger. Um, but that's kind of an interesting spot, to, you know, to look at. The air filter is a little bit different. It is inside the engine nacelle in the back left quadrant right here. With a flashlight, you can look up and just barely see it. It's kind of nice, better than the 185 that has it out here. Um, it's a little more protected back inside of here, okay? All right, let's come on around. Um, mud, mud guards. This airplane is very susceptible. If, it, if you know, It's going in and out of dirt strips with gravel and rocks. Those things get kicked up. And when you're doing a pre-flight on this airplane, you want to pay a lot of attention to the bottom of the skin on the horizontal stabilizer, okay? Because uh, it'll, I've seen it tear holes into the skin, you know, rocks and things. You can see it's already been beat up. There's some big chunks right there. Not unairworthy, but that's why we have this boot. This boot is not de-ice. It is a boot to try and protect this horizontal stabilizer. You can see there's significant dents all through this, okay? And that's with a rock guard. Mm -hmm. So... You can imagine. Uh, at the end here, there's a, a balancing weight. I like to put my finger on that. If you come around here, you can see there's a balancing weight on there. You know, if that thing is loose, you don't want to fly because if you get into a flutter with a loose or you know uh, separated balance weight, that could be significant. Um, there's a skid on the bottom here. Okay, it's not uncommon for a student or even anybody for that matter to to catch the the skid or the, you know the uh, the tail there I like to look at it in a pre-flight so that I know that it wasn't me that smashed it up into the uh, you know into the tail cone uh, a fairly large trim tab you want to make sure that um, you know it's not excessively loose there's probably cotter pins yeah there's uh, castellated nuts and cotter pins um, on that, you want to make sure that they're in place. I flew an ultralight years ago uh, with a pusher prop, the cotter pin, ca castellated nut with no cotter pin. Didn't mm. catch that, right? Vibrated off and flew out and chewed up the prop on the way out Ooh. and had to make a 180 emergency landing on the runway. Wow. So castellated nuts and cotter pins are very important. They're together. <laughs> you yeah. don't have a cotter pin, that's a problem. And I tell you what, you lose a trim tab like that, as big as that, I mean, it's going to be significant, right? All right, this door is one of the unique things about the 185. Have you guys Seriously. heard about this door yeah. and briefed on it? Okay. Um, if you want to go around, Josh, and open it from the inside, there's a tab that needs to be lifted up vertically. As you can see, with the flaps down, right, this door cannot open. And that's a problem if you make an emergency landing and you can't get your passengers out. So I'm going to talk about how to open this door, even though, that's good, thank you. Okay, even though the flaps are down, there is a way to open this door. Okay, and this is something that you will have to do in a pre-flight briefing of your passengers. It's very important that they understand how this door opens. Okay, 
So as you can see, this, this door does not open any further than that. There's no way a passenger can get out. But this back door has a red handle that uh, sits vertically, and it needs to be brought down horizontally like this okay, to be opened just enough for that red handle then to retract back in and the door can open. Okay? Sneaky Cessna. Right? Now the, the center passengers are going to have a great old time trying to get through there and out, right? Okay? Yeah, good. So that comes up and it's spring loaded back. So, you know, when you don't just release it because, I mean, it's going to kind of. All right? So then they just go opposite back in. And uh, what I'll do is, you know, to close it, I'll reach in through here and, and just shut it like that from the inside, okay? Or you can do it once you've gone around uh, and you're back inside. But there's a micro switch, okay? There's a micro switch right here. I'm not going to show it to you now, but uh, if that door is open, it disables the flaps from extending. And the reason for that is if you had this door out here and you extended the flaps, you'd get bent metal. Okay. Question. Yes. Uh, if the flaps are down in the micro switch, can you still get them back up? No. Okay, so they so. won't operate at they all? They won't right? operate at all. Nope, they will not operate. So uh, there's been pilots where, stu like not students, but passengers will knock that door handle up and it'll disengage the door just enough so down. then you want to go to extend your flaps and they don't come down. Hmm. First thing I would do is look over and say, hey, why hey, Pedro, you know, shut that door again and you've got flaps, okay? Um, let's see, we just got a couple more minutes here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Bruce, I need to do that too. Okay, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Okay, just looking down here, um, you've got a couple of drain points. See if I can find them. There's some drain points. Those drain lines are typically painted red at the tip, and if you see fuel coming out of them, that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Some of them are drains for the induction manifold. If there's fuel draining from there, that's not as big a deal. If you over prime, mm -hmm. then it's going to leak out there. But there's an engine driven pump and an auxiliary fuel pump. Those two have their own drains. And if there's fuel coming out of it, that means there's, there's fuel in the wrong place. Yep. And that's, that's grounding, right? So uh, there's one here, and I think that's an induction. That's the induction um, drain. It's a, it's a rubber drain. This over here on this side is going to be, there's a rubber one and then a, an aluminum one. You really got to kind of get up in there and look at them. There's three of them. One is induction. One is engine driven and one is uh, auxiliary fuel pump. Actually, this one is the auxiliary fuel pump. And then there's one here that's engine driven. And then there's also a uh, battery drain, okay? And then over there is the engine breather, okay? But if you look at any of these and you see fuel dripping out, that is cause grounding. for grounding unless you discover that it's the induction manifold drain, mm -hmm. then you're okay. But if you see any fuel dripping from those, investigate. Now, obviously, this one right here that sticks out is the fuel strainer. Mm -hmm. So you may have a little bit drip out there, but you shouldn't have it consistently dripping. Yeah. Okay. Um, here we have a, uh, a stall horn. Okay, and it's, uh, it's not a reed type or a suction. It's just a tab. And some of them, I don't know, one of our airplanes, it's heated, okay? I don't know if it's this one or the other one, but we, pitot tube, and uh, I got on the, the other airplane, 89 Zulu, I picked up a, about a quarter to half an inch of ice on a flight. And uh, my, I was grateful to have pitot heat, but if you don't have stall horn heat, you know, this could freeze in the down position and you, you, would, you could get a stall and not know it. Um, angle of attack. Okay, this is going to be unique to you guys, and it got two holes, and it measures the difference in pressure between each hole that translates to angle of attack. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and you want to make sure that these holes are free and not clogged up. Yeah. So, like, if somebody's waxing the plane and then you see wax all chalked up in there, yeah. 
you know it's dysfunctional or bugs. And they had these on the TXI sure. 172. Oh, okay. Well, All right. So. Great. Philemon didn't. So, I mean, this is a very abbreviated pre-flight. I know you have to go. So yeah. uh, these are the highlights of this airplane, and your instructor will go over the rest. Cool. Thanks, Stefan. All right. You're welcome.